Hello and welcome for you. This is the third time I've tried to record this video, so I hope everything goes more smoothly now. Uh, we're going to talk about transformations of power functions right now. We're going to leave behind the polynomials with all their hills and their valleys and their local max and local min and local extreme points and blah 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 blah. And let's talk about the very very basic power functions once again. And so if you haven't done so already, I want you to try this little blip up here uh, with the graphing calculator or with Desmos or um, with some app you may have on your phone or your tablet, one or the other. Um, I would like you to try this before continuing with the video. So if you haven't done that, please explore what these things look like and see if you can come to some kind of conclusions and explore what these things look like. See if you can come to some kind of conclusions uh, before I actually show you, which I'm actually going to do right now. That was a little oops on my computer part, if you were wondering what happened there. Um, I'm going to pull up Desmos. And I've already got y equals x cubed in there. And this this little one here shouldn't be an exponent. That's a subscript one. Uh, this program likes to move stuff up for some reason. See, it's got the exponents way high too. But anywho, um, let's take a look and see what happens when we start um, playing with this equation. So I'm going to graph in y2 here. Uh, y equals x cubed. So x cubed and now we're going to add 4. Any suggestions on what's going to happen to this thing? If you remember your parabolas from grade 10, this won't be a surprise. It was a vertical translation for spaces upward and if I wanted it to go downward I could have just put a minus there and it would have shifted down. So this red thing just shifts down onto the blue thing um, by the minus 4. So it's gone 4 spaces. Uh, how about if we put brackets around some things? And again, if you remember your parabolas and even last year with all of your other interesting graphs, your creeper graphs, your square roots, which is the sideways parabola, um, if you remember those, hopefully you remember what happens when I put a minus 4 in here. When I, But also remember when I put a minus 4 in there, what I'm really putting in there is just 4. Um, but there's in the general form there's a negative in there which switches the sign of what I put in. So that's why there's the minus 4 and since it was a positive 4 it's moved forward 4 spaces. So you just have to remember that when I stick a number in here there was a negative sign that's going to switch the sign of it. Uh, so what I actually shoved in there was 4 so it goes 4 units to the right. Uh, just remember movement is the opposite way that you think it should be when it's in the bracket. How about if I change that to a 3x? Uh, this thing has gotten stretched vertically and I'm just going to try and show you what the vertical stretch is here. I'm going to take this point, which is the point 1, 1, and show you it on the transformed one. It is right here. It's the point 1, 3. So the y value just got multiplied by 3 and that's what happened. The y value got multiplied by 3. If I take another one on here, let's take the point 2, 8. Let's see where it is. If it's multiplied by 3, it should be the point 2 and 24. So let's pull this down. Let's take a look. Let's see if 224 is on the blue one. And looks like right about there, 224 is on the blue one. So you see the y value, all the x's stay the same, the y values just got stretched by a factor of 3. We multiplied them all by 3. So now what happens if I put brackets around there? Ooh, it looked like it got stretched even more. Um, or maybe it didn't get stretched more, maybe it got squished. Maybe it got squished in from each side this way. It's pushing it in to the middle. Uh, if that's the case, then my x values should change. So let's take a look at this x value. This x value was 1, 1. And now if it has been squished by a factor of 3, then that 1 in the x value should become a 1 third. So let's move over and see and where there's 1. I can't get right on it there, but it looks like 1 and 0 0.34, which is close to a third. Let's try one that's that's better. Let's try the point. Now, on the, on the red graph, uh, I'm going to go to 3 
and 3 cubed is 27 so I need to go way up to be able to find where 327 was uh, which is right there 327 now if this really is a horizontal compression then that what that x value should get divided by 3 so when I move over here and I find what the new value is whoop it's the point 127 it did 327 now becomes 127 the x was divided by that 3 okay so that's what's happened here and I'm just going to quickly show you uh, the same thing with um, to the fourth I'm not going to go into quite as much detail on this one because it's basically the same thing you just have to remember that now you're dealing with this parabola like thing that's just a little flat on the bottom. So all of these things happen the same with it. If I add 5, it goes up 5 spaces. If I subtract 5, it goes down 5 spaces. If I put a minus 5 in the brackets, remember when I, when I put a minus 5 in the brackets, it's actually uh, what I'm really doing is putting a 5 in there, but the minus that was in the general form is changing it to a um, negative. So it looks like minus 5. So it's been shifted forwards to 5 spaces there. Or if I wanted to put a plus there, that's what's going to shift it backwards. Oh, it disappeared entirely. There it is. Okay. And again, stretch and compression. If I take x to the fourth, not to the 44th but x to the fourth and if I put the um, the 3 out front everything gets stretched up and this point which was the point uh, da, 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 where's the point 1 oh it's right there okay uh, do, 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 1 3 1, 3 is on that graph. So it used to be 1, 1. It's now 1, 3. So all of my y values have gotten moved up. I'm going to put the just the regular graph on here too. y equals x to the fourth. So we can see it. Oh, it's green. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so x to the fourth. Um, what On x to the fourth, what was 1, 1 is now 1, 3 on the new one that's been multiplied by 3. But if I move this, I don't put it there, but I put it inside the brackets, it's even skinnier. Um, what has happened here is all my x values, and I'm going to go to 3, and 3 to the 4th is 81, so i got to go way high here. So I'm going to go pull it down way up, so I can still see these things, but whoop -a -doo -doo -doo, where's 81? Okay, so here's the point. It's at 381. And now when I apply the 3 in there, it's going to be a division by 3. So my x, my 81 stays the same, but the x gets divided by 3. So it's a vertical compression. Whoop, zoomed it in. There we go. Now it's 1. 3 divided by 3 is 1. Okay, so that's a, um, a horizontal compression. I think I said vertical a minute ago. That's not what I meant. Uh, we're going to leave that page and we're going to take a look at what this means. So the general form of the transform power function is this. y equals a k x minus d to the n plus c. Okay, where n is our exponent and can be any of the power functions. And remember this d, whatever the d looks like, this negative is going to change the sign. So the d, however it appears in our function, is the opposite sign. So I'm just going to fill this all in for you and you can pause this and fill it all in yourself. Uh, this is nothing new. This is the stuff that you've been working on for a couple of years now. Uh, so what we're going to do here, we're going to describe the transformation of y equals x to the fourth using these kind of terms. Now the only thing that's up here that we haven't already talked about when I was showing you the stuff on Desmos uh, is the fact that a and k are also responsible for reflections. Uh, if a is negative, then it's a vertical reflection. It flips over the x-axis. Uh, so it um, 
that basically flips over the x-axis. And this is a reflection. If k is less than 0, it flips over the y-axis. So it flips left to right instead of up to down. So it's a um, horizontal flip. So now we're going to describe this transformation. Um, so it's got uh, it's got an a value, it's got a k value, it's got a d value, and it's got a c value. So it's got all of those things going for it. So let's deal with the a value first. That's a vertical stretch by 3. Okay, so it's going to multiply all of our y values by 3. Uh, how about that k value right here, that k value of 2? That's a horizontal compression by 2. So we're going to divide all of our x values by 2. Uh, the next thing is plus 5 in the brackets. It's a horizontal translation, five spaces to the left. Remember, the actual d value here will be negative 5. Um, the d value is the opposite sign that appears uh, in the bracket. So since it's negative 5, it's going left five spaces. And, and the last one, this plus 7 on the end, it's a vertical translation, seven spaces up. Since it's positive, it's going up. Okay, so that describes the transformation. Uh, now, ooh, I've already got this one done. Let's erase it and do it over again. Okay, describe the transformation of y equals x cubed into this. The first thing I want you to note is that this is our x. It's, it's our function right in here, which is x cubed. So if I'm going to write this as a function instead of in function notation, and I'm going to use x cubed as my function. This is y equals 4, and then inside the function is 3x minus 3, because that's what's in the f here. That's what's inside the f function there. And our function is actually cubed, so what was inside that, I have to put a cube on it, and now it's plus 2. Now, what are the transformations of this one? Well, it's got four of them again. Uh, it has this transformation, which is a vertical stretch uh, by 4. It has this here, which is going to be a horizontal compression um, by 3, which is going to be division by 3. Uh, then it's got the next thing here, it's got this minus 3 in the brackets, which we know that the d value is actually going to be a positive 3. So that is going to be a, ver a horizontal translation, 3 units, and since we know that the d is going to be positive, it's going to be the right. So 3 units right. And lastly on the end here, we have this plus 2, which we know is going to be the vertical translation, and it's going up since it's positive. So there we go. There's our four um, transformations. Uh, now let's have a look at this one. Describe the transformations of this. This is almost identical to the last one. I'm going to rewrite this using it as an actual function rather than using the f in there because we know that it's this function. The reason we use the f is because I could substitute any of the power functions in here um, and just change my equation. But this is going to be y equals, I've got the negative 3 in front of the function, and then I need brackets for the function, which is going to be to the 8. Now what is in that function? It's 2x plus 5. Now this is a little bit different because I don't have a 2 in front of a set of brackets and I need that to be able to describe the transformations. So I have the negative 3, I got to take the 2 out and I have x plus 5 over 2. And all of that is going to be to the 8. So now I can actually describe the transformations. I'm just going to do that verbally, you can write it down if you want. We've got negative 3, so since it's negative it's going to be flipped over the x-axis and it's going to be upside down. Uh, and we can refer to it as upside down because it actually has an opening, it's an even function. Um, the 3 means that it's going to be stretched, so all of our y values are going to get multiplied by 3. The 2 here means that it's had a horizontal compression. All our x values are going to get divided by 2, so that's a horizontal compression. Um, this thing here, remember our d value is the opposite of what it looks, so our d value here is actually negative 5 halves. And since our d value is negative 5 halves, this thing is going backwards 5 halves spaces, or backwards 2 and a half spaces 
on the x-axis. So this is a horizontal translation. Uh, and there's nothing out on the end here, which means that there's no vertical translation. Um, so that is that transformation. Okay, now if we can simplify this, here's what happens to each of these function. K and D transform the X coordinate of the function. Since K is a horizontal compression, it divides the X coordinate. So it divides it by K. Uh, and then the D slides it around. So we get the D here that slides it around. Um, and remember the D is the opposite sign that appears. Opposite sign that appears. That, whoop, that doesn't say that. Opposite sign that appears. Uh, the A and C transform the Y coordinate of the function. Since A is a vertical stretch, it multiplies the Y coordinate. So it multiplies the Y coordinate, and then we take the K, and we use the K to slide it around. Uh, so now we have a formula for each coordinate that we can use to transform a table of values of the function. So let's take a look at this table of values. Okay, this is the table of values for y equals x cubed, and we want to transform it into this. So we need to know what um, our a, c, d, and k are. So our a value here is 2. Um, our k value uh, is 5. Our d value is, remember, opposite sign that appears, it's 4. And our uh, c value on the end is 6. So remember, all of these things, what I'm going to do, and I'm going to do it once and then um, not really again, uh, or I'll just fill in the rest of them. So this negative 2, remember, we have to take the negative 2 the x gets divided by the k value, so it's going to be 5, negative 2 divided by 5, and then we have to add the d value, so plus 4. So negative 2 fifths plus 4. And negative 2 fifths plus 4 is 3.6. Now we're going to do a similar thing to our y, but remember our a value multiplies the y, so we get 2 times our y value is negative 8, and then we have to tack on the c, which is 6. So that's going to be negative 16 plus 6 will be negative 10. Okay, so what this is here, remember, was the x coordinate divided by um, our our d value, or sorry, our k value, x divided by k, and then we add on the d. And this down here was our a value multiplied by the y, adding on the c. And we need to do that to all of these things here. So there they all are there, but I'm just going to tell you what I did there. I took the x coordinate, I divided by 5, and I added 4. So for each of these x's, um, this number here came from doing negative 1 divided by 5 plus 4. This thing here came from 0 divided by 5 plus 4. 4.2 4 came from 1 divided by 5 plus 4. And 4.4 4 came from 2 divided by 5 plus 4. So this was the generic form of this thing that I did to start with. And for the y's, I did this, only this is a y. So I did a y plus uh, C. So we do, to get this one here, I did um, A, which is 2, 2 times 8 plus 6. And here I did 2 times negative 1 plus 6, 2 times 0 plus 6, 2 times 1 plus 6, and 2 times 8 plus 6. And that's where those things came from. Okay, so in general, this is our mapping. Every one of our xy's maps onto this. So if I want to give the mapping of x cubed into this thing, uh, all I have to do is replace all of these things in here. And what I have to say, if I'm going to give the mapping, every xy for this function turns into x divided by k, but from here the k is actually 5, so x divided by 5, and then I have to add on the d, but remember the d is the opposite sign, so it's going to be plus 4. So x divided by 5 plus 4, and all of the y's are going to change to a 
which in this case is 2, times whatever our y value is, plus k, but the k in this case is plus 6. So this is actually the general mapping that I was using up here when I punched all of those numbers into my calculator. And now you have a few exercises to do.